Well, God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. I pray that all is well in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Holy Spirit, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Touch every heart, mind, and soul. And as your word goes forth, Father, may you minister to every individual under the sound of my voice. And may the word of what's being heard. May they have the ability to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. That faith will arise. That strength will come. That hope will awaken. And we thank you, Father, for the leading, the guiding, and the empowerment of your spirit of truth that brings to the believer life and life in abundance, freedom, peace, love, joy in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you today for the word that is written, that is alive and living. And we glorify, we magnify, and we honor your name. Bless this word as it goes forth. Breathe upon it. And may the hearts of your people rejoice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, God bless you guys again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of part two of Ephesians chapter one. And I left off on verse number nine. Oh, I'm actually going to be starting at verse number nine, and we're going to finish this up here. And this will be the uh, the finishing and the wrapping up of, of Ephesians chapter one. So here we go. Verse number nine, making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will. Remember how his was highlighted, how his plan, his will, his purpose, his pleasure his call. Remember, we are here for him. So going back, I'm going to start again here at verse number nine, making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will, of his plan, of his purpose. And it is this in accordance with his good pleasure, his merciful intention, which he had previously proposed, uh, purposed and set forth in him. He planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on the earth. In him, there it is again, in him we did you catch that? In him, we also were made God's, capital G-O-D, apostrophe yes, heritage, his portion. And we obtained an inheritance for we had been foreordained, chosen, and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose. Whose purpose? His purpose. Who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. Now, whose will here? Whose plan? Whose purpose? Whose pleasure? His. It has nothing to do with us here in Ephesians 1, but it all has to do with us in him. Where's our focus? Where's our attention? Where's our heart? Where's our lives rooted in? What are we adhered to? What are we trusted in? What are we relying on? Is it in him or is it in us? Because the minute we get our eyes focused in it upon us or we look at us or we try to make it about us or our will, our plan, our purpose, it will ultimately fail. And not only will it fail, but it places us in disobedience with where, whereas that in and of itself is already sin. Disobedience is sin that separates us from God because our faith 
and obedience should be in him, his purpose, his plan, his will, his agenda, his motives, not ours, not our way, not our will, his way, because it is the truth that we know that sets us free. And his way is the perfect way. His plan is the perfect plan. His purpose is the perfect purpose in and upon and for our lives. Verse number 12. So that we who first hoped in Christ, who first put our confidence in him, have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. Does it say live for financial prosperity? Live for uh, fancy cars and fancy houses and uh, uh, for your name to be known and for you to be a CEO or this, that, and the other. And praise God if he does it. But that's not the goal. We are, we are destined and appointed to live for the purpose of his glory. So brothers and sisters, know his will, know his purpose, know his plan. And no matter what any person says, it don't matter. Brother, hear me, brothers and sisters. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be rude. But you have to be obedient to the voice of the Lord, the Holy Spirit in and upon and through the whole, through the Holy Word that is written and the conviction of the Lord. Because, because when it's all said and done, there's only going to be one that you're going to stand before and give an account to. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he will have fire in his eyes when he returns again. Verse 13. In him, there it is again. In him, you also who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings, gospel, the good news of your salvation and have believed in and adhered to and relied on him were stamped with the seal of the long promised Holy Spirit. Verse 14, that spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance, the first fruits, the pledge and foretaste, the down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of his glory, of his glory, of his glory. For this reason, somebody say this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all of the saints, the people of God. 16. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Hallelujah to the King of glory by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light because you, we are children of light when we are in Christ. He is the light of the world and we are the light of the world so that you can know and understand the hope to which he, he, he called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones. And so that you can know and understand. Did you get that? So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. And he has put all things under our feet and has appointed him 
the universal and supreme head of the church, ecclesia, a headship ex exercised throughout the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all, for in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. Glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. For my brothers and my sisters, he is coming back again. He is coming back again. He is coming back for a church without spot, blemish, and wrinkle. He is coming back again. Are you ready for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? We have a choice. Choose ye this day, life or death. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace right now. So from what reality by the spirit or carnality shall the believer who professes and proclaims Jesus Christ as Lord live from? As a daily lifestyle choice. If we love him, obey his will, his purpose, his plan, his agenda, his pleasure, his delight. It has got nothing to do with you or me, brother and sister. We are here for him, by him, and through him. We are not and don't even belong to ourselves for we have been bought with a price because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And as believers in the body of Christ today, don't get it twisted. You are not here for you. We are here to bring him glory. We are here to proclaim the name that is above all names, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Messiah. He came. The death, the burial, the resurrection. And he's coming again. Are you ready? Are you ready? We are not here for us. We are here for him to bring him glory. If you think you're here for you, you are an idol in and of yourself. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ. Lay down everything at the feet of Jesus. Pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow him. Be obedient to everything that the Lord has commanded through his word and by the Holy Spirit that is leading. Be blessed in Jesus' name.